with perception underscore shifter from Instagram. Uh, so you've been kind enough to let me pick your brain uh, on some subjects for my audience at Narc Abuse TV Network. And the first one I want to ask you about is anger follows fear. Uh, I'd like to get your explanation and give us some direction on what it means that anger follows fear. All right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you uh, for having me on the show, uh, first, first of all. And um, thanks for uh, joining, Manisha. Uh, well, now, anger does follow fear from what I've always learned and what I've always experienced in my life. So if any time you feel, what I'm trying to say is any time you feel angry, there is something that you're in fear of to then make you feel um, angry so these chemicals are being released within your brain uh, once this fear starts to develop within within your mind now if I for uh, for instance if I give you an example if someone has pushed you in the wrong way or done something to you in a bad way or you've lost anything in terms of your survival maybe money maybe a family member now you know normally we tend to start start to become angry at them times now if you really ask yeah, yourself yeah. like why am i getting angry about this like if someone's passed away why am i getting angry if i've been robbed of, of some sort of money why am i getting angry yes you are getting angry because of it's probably affected your survival but then is there something that you're in fear of is there something that maybe because of that money you needed to pay your bills or you needed it for for maybe for your survival that you're fearing now that you might not be able to survive so then you get angry over it. Now, one can argue that if you've come back home and your other half, you know, hasn't done the dishes or, you know, hasn't cleaned the house up as, as promised, as agreed, then you're getting angry about it. Now, if you really think, what could you be fearing there? Like, there's nothing you could be fearing when your partner hasn't cleaned the room or hasn't cleaned the dishes or, or cooked some food for yourself. So what are you getting angry about? Well, again, you are in fear yeah, of what you would need to do. Okay. Now, normally what we do is normally focus on the other person. Like, it's yeah. not my fault why I'm getting angry. Well, that's never the case. It's always, it's not your fault. I wouldn't say it's your fault, but I would say the reason is always you. So if you're you're feeling that you know this person hasn't done what you expected them to do then you're going to be in fear that how will i be able to survive now without some food without clean dishes for the whole week or cleaning for the whole week um so that's what i mean when i say that fear um is first and then you'd, you'd be angry but if you're angry if you find the what you're fearing about then you tend to stop being angry even less. Now, I'm not saying because one would argue that emotions are fine and you should feel every emotion and you should get angry and it's totally fine. Yes, I'm not saying it's not. I'm saying, yes, if you do need to get angry, sometimes you should. But if there's some times where you don't need to be angry and you can yeah. understand that this is this is only a survival mechanism for something that you're in fear of for your survival. And when you stop being like a scaredy cat, shall I say, you know, <laughs> then you less be angry. So most of the time, a lot of angry people. And if that is that is you, if you're being angry, I'm, you know, I don't really want to call you scaredy cat, but I do want to tell you that there is something that you're fearing and you're in fear of too much. So once you become fearless, that's when you would start start to become less angry and and link less things to your to your survival and really take responsibility for everything really that's happening in your life. So if somebody hasn't done the dishes or the cooking or whatever it is that you expected them to do and you're getting angry for that, you have to obviously understand that you can't really change or expect any from anyone else. So where did you go wrong and what you should do? And instead of being in fear of what's going on, and you know what, it's totally to totally fine as well to fear things and, and, and to get angry as well. But just by understanding this little thing, it'll help you know especially with people with addiction mental health criminal behavior issues mm -hmm. you know it is it is one thing is the impulsive control where you know we find it hard to um you know help with our emotions and keep them in check and you know our behaviors and stuff like that so this is one thing when it comes to anger and fear so um 
Hopefully we're still connected there. I got you. Yeah, we you are. Can hear me. Okay. So when it comes to this pattern uh, of fear, anger, anger, fear, it can literally become a cycle that a person develops as a lifestyle that they're living in fear. But they may need to seriously become more responsible with their emotions and maybe even responsibilities and not count on someone else. Because once, so in other words, me, if I, if I'm living in fear, that means when someone disappoints me, I get upset because I feel I don't have control over what's going to happen next. Yeah. If mm -hmm. I understand you correctly. Yeah. So then I can literally live my life that way. Yeah. And now everybody else is the problem, especially if they let me down. Yeah. And I'm angry all the time. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I'm, I'm ticked off and upset all the time when actually I need to look at what I'm afraid of and not live like a scaredy cat. Mm -hmm. That's correct. How does a person become fearless? What are some steps that a person can make to become fearless? Well, um, I think one thing where we go wrong is we are so engage into all these things that we want in life you know we want a perfect house we want a perfect relationship we want you know the perfect car the perfect education the perfect job you know and all these things we link them to our survival so if we lose or we're not getting what we need or what we expect then we become we start to live in fear like you know, oh, what if I don't get that job? What if I don't get this money? What if I don't this? What if I don't get a good relationship? You know, and we link all of this to our survival. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, you know, we are induced to multiply, you know, to get married, to have children. Yes, and that is all linked to our survival. Yes, connection, that's linked to our survival. Yes, but then when these, when there's a lot of things in life that you don't really need and you've linked it to your survival, that's when you start to fear, fear of losing someone, fear of losing a relationship, fear of losing someone, you know, in terms of death. Yeah. Now, yeah, so we always fear these things and we link it to our survival. The minute we hardwire our survival mode, we change our survival that, you know, really, we don't really need a lot of things in life um, to survive. Um, and a lot of the stuff is maybe a lot of music that we listen to, uh -huh. uh, maybe movies that we watch. And if you do watch the movies and listen to music, it's all linking survival to relationships, to your partner, you know, to a family member, you know, then you watch all these um, videos with all these people with money and, you know, um, women and, you know, uh, you know, all these fancy stuff that kids are learning, learning in this day and age um, and they're trying to copy it. They're all linking this all to their survival, say expensive clothes and expensive you know, watches, Rolex watches and cars and stuff like that. So all of these things, we start to start to make us angry. If you wanted to go to a party and have a perfect time and someone said something stupid, maybe a family member of yours, you start to get angry. You start to fear that every, everybody's going to judge me. Everybody's going to laugh at me. Everybody thinks that, you know, I'm like this. I'm like, that's going to be hard for me to survive in the world now. You know, I'll be the next top story and all that. And it's <laughs> all made up psychological stuff. We've made up all in our minds. Nobody really cares about you, but we are as always center of attention in our own minds. And we think that this is a big thing. But one mantra that I've been taught is always leave yourself with how does it matter? That's the only way I become less fearless, less fe fearful. So I become fearless. And every time something happens or occurs in my life, you know, I do, I do, we need to analyze it. You know what I mean? You need to see, okay, let's reflect. Let's see how, you know, will this affect my survival really? Or is it something made up in my mind or conditioned through community, society, through movies, films, and stuff like that? And then you can obviously question it. That's, that's what you call intelligence. And when you question that, you'd come to a conclusion that really it's not needed for, for your survival. And then you can be at peace. Then you don't need to, need to be scared because really, if you ask anybody in this world, anybody, do you fear death? Do you fear you won't get the next best job? Do you fear you won't have any money? And many replies will be yes. You know, and really, you don't need any of that for your survival. You know, at least you have a bit of money. 
Right. You know, right. obviously, so you need money to survive, obviously, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But as long as you have a bit of money to then get some food or get some clothes or whatever it is, that's all you really need. But then we go over overboard and over top. Now, we've got a full tap running of water, but that doesn't mean you drink all of it and consistently okay. drinking it, do you? Yeah. What yeah. you would do is when you're thirsty, you'd have a bit, you know, and then you'd come back to you and have a bit more. But what people are doing here is, they've confused themselves and they feel they feel that we need everything and anything to survive and let's keep it for a later date as well but really and truly when you do get to that later date you will understand and know that you've just wasted your time (laughs) and and many people understand that you know what i mean many people understand that right at the end you know what i mean where you know they they know then what's more important and you know if, if one thing i've learned with survival is is connection you know, like that famous John Hare um, famously said through through an experiment about the uh, rat cage, rat park, sorry. And what they did in the rat park was they noticed that when when they've obviously been induced with heroin, they're still not having the heroin water when they've got family or when they've got other mice in the, in this rat park, in this cage. So what they found was with this rat park, rats are obviously wanting pick choosing connection with other rats rather than the heroin laced water right. opiate water so the what they're saying is what john Hare famously said was obviously that just shows that humans need connection do you get what i'm trying to say so you no know, regardless with addiction or not you know with opium water or not heroin water or not we are wired to survive and to survive we need connection it's 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 that simple we we can jeopardize our connections by putting things first just from what you're talking about we can literally lose sight of the basic necessities we need Mm -hmm. it it reminds me i'm looking at something here some of the points from your instagram page you have some excellent postings there um if we don't really understand ourselves and focus on understanding ourselves, we can be driven by our fears and our anger to the point that we could lose sight of the right perspective about life from what I was understanding about some of your postings. What does it mean to focus on understanding you? Wow. Did I really write that? (laughs) (laughs) And you write, see, you're writing stuff and don't even remember how good you're writing stuff. Uh, You know, (laughs) (laughs) you know, when I'm in my element um, and when I'm writing, I am so in my element at that time and I really do enjoy it and yeah, with, with some with some stuff that um, I could sometimes come out with. Uh, you, you wrote it because trust me, that didn't come out of me. <laughs> all I did um, was string it all together because it all makes sense. But when it comes to focusing on understanding you, you have an expression and a posting that talks about that. Mm-hmm, Explain mm-hmm. that to my audience. Right now you have an audience of one, which is me. I pick. I get to pick your brain. Uh, mm-hmm. The first person I did this with was Sam Vacton, and you're the second person. So you're in, you're in great company. Uh, so focus on understanding you. What does that mean? Yeah, so, you know, I think a lot of the times we focus on all other people in our lives. And what we always try and blame others for what is happening to us in our lives. Now, there's this thing called... Um, um, an internal locus of control and an external locus of control. I don't know if you've heard that ever in, in your mm. life. No, I haven't. Yeah. Well, my dad taught me this when I was um, a very a, a very young age. And um, what he what he said to me was, um, you know, there was um, a little dispute outside in the garden when I was a child. And I thought he was not going to shout at me and he was going to shout at my friends and his dad. But he turned around and said to me, it's your own fault for going to them or playing with them or being with them or you know so basically what he's trying to say is it's all your not fault but it's it's all it's all your decision it's all up to you whatever you want in your life however you want it to be it's all in your hands so that's like an internal ox of control anything that happens in your life or that is going to happen it is all what you have done what you have created and if you want to stop it you can yes sometimes we can't say if you have a car accident or 
you know, if right. you've gambled some business uh, money in your business and stuff like that. So um, there's there's obviously them things that you can't handle. But then what you're going to do after that is in your hands. So that's internal loss of, loss of control. So if I've had a car accident and then, you know, I stay depressed throughout my life, obviously because of what has happened, that has impacted me within my life. Now, obviously, I could go see some um, a, counts, uh, a psychologist for, for some sort of counselling sessions or, you know, anything that I need to really do in my life um, to get that better, maybe some physio or whatever it is. So right. what I'm doing is I'm blaming it, not blaming, I don't want to use the word blaming. I want to really just take, say, like, take responsibility of, like, your actions. So what are you going to do after that? Now, I could, on the other end, just blame the driver. Oh, it was the driver's fault. He hit me, you know, and swear at him and be angry with him for my, for the rest of my life. And then maybe be angry at other drivers that are driving erratically on the road. Mm -hmm. But that's not going to change my life. So that's internal of locus control, external locus control. So even if you're, if like praying to God and believing that God or a higher power is controlling everything in your life, that's an external locus of control as well. But if you're just praying, that could be internal because when you pray, you kind of talk to yourself and it's just the way you perceive it and how you um, see God or how you utilize a higher power in your life. So you can use it as an internal locus of control where you're speaking to your own subconscious mind and you know everything is obviously you and you're talking to God through you or you're talking to, um, and but if you're blaming God, or saying that it's all God, it's all because of God, it's in, all in God's hands, then that's an external locus, locus control. So focusing on yourself is having an internal locus of control, and focusing on others or blaming on others or saying it's all because of the world is an external locus of control. Now, if you want to discover yourself and how maybe what I've wrote wrote in the post, now if you want to discover yourself, you need an internal locus of control, 100%. Otherwise, you can never understand yourself. You can never discover yourself. Um, and then you can never even recover yourself. So when we go into a mental health episode or addiction or any criminal behavior, um, we've sent down into prison or whatever it is, you know, if we don't have an internal locus of control, if we don't discover our own selves, if we don't recover ourselves, then we can never find out who we are and get out of this addiction or help with this mental health or this criminal behavior. So that's more on the self-improvement so, so, um, kind of things. Some people don't even know that, hey, look, I didn't know there's an internal and external. So I know I can't be the only one. So some people live their life then blaming everyone else. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. How does that, <laughs> well, that's not a good perception to have right it, mm -hmm. they need to have a perception shift how do they shift their perception to recognize individual accountability and responsibility well that's that's a very hard one for me um because i've always i've understood my own self that it's just what my dad said to me that day i think that that just you know hit it on the nail for me but with a lot of people i don't it's what you believe, you know, it's, it's who, what you want to believe in. I think a lot of people don't believe that it's actually in their hands. You know, I think a lot of people don't believe, like, I don't know if you've watched um, The Secret. Now, in The Secret, it's all about your intentions um, are like waves and whatever you think is what happens. So there, what they, what they tend to say is that whatever you believe or whatever you say, or whatever you think and feel, that's what's going to come and that's what, that's what you're going to attract. Now, like yeah, so if you, if you look at it on a, on a magical wave kind of way, then that's, you know, utter nonsense. It's, there's nothing magical. But if you look at it as an internal locus of control way where, you know, I actually believe that it is my thinking, it is my feel, like it is my... Because, for example, say... If you come to my house now and I just feel that you want to fight me or you want to be angry with me or, you know, whatever it is. Right. So I'm either going to be 
shaking the cup of tea towards you when I'm coming there or I'm just perceiving in my brain that you don't like me so I'm going to show that sort of attitude and then that is going to, that's what's going to happen we're going to have a fight because that's what I was thinking at the start because, because you're already coming in thinking that way yeah, yeah. so I've manifested it you know um, not, not by any magical means but just by my intention that this is what I feel that what's and then I'm going to be like then I reassure that and I'm say, see, I knew it. I knew that no. person didn't yes. like me. Yeah. But so we, we would have fulfilling. We would have came in. Yeah, self-fulfilling. Yeah. But we would have came into the situation situation. We're pretty much acting like we got a chip on our shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So if we start to believe that. No, I know even if you want to fight me or even if you're feeling angry towards me or whatever it is. I don't want that then all I need to think that you are not angry with me and you want to be angry with me the more I think that the more my behavior my calmness even when you you try and say something to me I won't react back to you so there won't be a fight because it takes two to tango it takes two to have a fight and without me engaging into the fight there can't be any fight but I have to believe that these all these things is something you need to believe if you believe that it is somebody else's fault or no he wants to fight me or he wants to be angry with me i don't have any choice over it you know it is not in my hands the external locus of control then um it's a guaranteed doom like obviously you're not gonna you know come off the planet of the earth in terms of your life but you're still going to be able to run your life but it's just going to be harder for you it's just going to be like you got a walking stick um you know on your side throughout throughout your life and you know it breaks relationship and like i said rather than all these materialistic things connection is is the biggest thing you can have for your survival i have uh i have worked feverishly to make sure that uh everyone can hear you oh, okay yeah uh, no you have and, and uh i uh, no 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 i'm talking about even right now i was doing a couple of things to oh, okay uh, that's fine yeah because it's been 23 minutes <laughs> to, 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 to get you out there. oh no no trust me a lot of people are going to watch this back uh you're you're going to be you're going to be prominent on our website that is, is uh going to be launching very soon you're gonna oh, be, okay uh, you're this is oh, this wow. is going to be no this is going to be a little you're you're special you just don't know I yet think... in, in in a little bit you'll know you'll know pretty soon you'll know oh. pretty soon when this goes up but uh, uh when it comes to um emotional pain yes you talk about that on your uh, your Instagram page. That's pain great. is something that a lot of people experience and they view it one way. Emotional emotions and their emotions often end up very painful because of relationships, uh, dealing with addiction, a number of other things, childhood traumas. When you talk about emotional pain, what's your perception on that? Yeah, so um, I've obviously suffered from emotional pain on a, on a really deep level. Um, it was the time when my dad passed away when I was 14 years old. Now, I didn't know, if I tell the truth, that I was suffering this. So this is the one of the main reasons why I am talking today over the internet to people because like, I didn't know things and I suffered things for like over 10 years and a lot of people are still suffering or will suffer in the future and they won't have no clue like me. So my emotional pain was obviously the survival instinct that I can't survive now without my father so you know in terms of that and then in just because I was young and at a young age when I was 14 years old it's mm -hmm. it's very hard for you to process you're still developing and when you're developing um, a brain for it for example and you know you're getting all this other information and seeing the sight of um, your father passed away in front of your eyes you know it kind of traumatizes you and it does haunt you you know what i mean and if somebody at that age at 14 i could totally understand i maybe won't be able to understand any other emotional pain but that one i'll definitely understand because i've lived with it you know and then obviously i went on to drugs and you know a drug heals your emotional pain and you know it kind of it doesn't heal it but then it what it does it blocks it for you so then you won't need to you know feel any emotions or handle any emotions and at that age I didn't I didn't know I didn't have a clue you know what I mean so I think 
at six f f from from 14 to 24 shall I say I, I suffered deeply with emotional pain with depression with um, anxiety you know I, I, I used to hate waking up in the morning you know and all I used to think is how bad is today going to be and oh, if I tell the truth today is totally the opposite but yeah it was really bad I was in a really dark dark place with with my emotional pain so yeah I've, I've suffered it and yes a lot of people um, suffer other emotional pains other traumas in their lives you know some people um, have relationships and it that's the majority of the people um, that I hear from um, have relationship issues um, and that's a survival instinct obviously you know what I mean um, but then you know you've got other trauma like you've got um, abuse um, you've got relationship abuse you've got assault you've got su sexual assault um, you know and then you've got other traumas like car accidents and, 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 and so forth so you know I think all, all, all of this is emotional pain that you can't you know you want to get rid of and if I tell you in the simpler 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 sim I really can't get it out of my head. I'm glad it happened to you instead simplest, of me. simplest form yeah simplest form. Yeah. yeah it's nothing but your memory that's it trauma equals memory that's all it is trauma oh. equals memory is your memory yes it's okay. just your memory that's playing back consistently that's all it is and then on another level it's taking you back to that event okay okay now when these memories start occurring within our brains or our minds we don't like it okay we get into a psychological mess if it's a relationship we keep thinking about that person if it's a death we keep thinking how could this happen to me like mm -hmm. i did um, or why you know all these questions are appearing um so you can't handle what what this has happened to you now in, in your life now it is a good thing in a way because then we know what we might face or what you know to become say stronger for anything else that might come like somebody that has so for me for example if i have to face death again I'll be fine with it because I know I've handled it before. But when you haven't handled it at all, it's going to be harder for you. Now, obviously, we know whoever has come, they will have to go one day or another. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't get these memories occurring in your brain every time, thinking that, oh, OK, this can happen, that can happen in your life. What should you do if this has happened now? What can you do for next time? So if you're in a relationship and um, the relationship's broken down, you bring, you're taken back to that memory every time. See, whoever has made us has made us like this for a reason. And the only one reason is, is to learn. Is to learn from that relationship. Is to learn from that death. Is to learn from that car accident. Is to learn from that abuse or that um abu uh, sexual assault or whatever it is there's always something to learn from it now obviously sexual assault and a death and a relationship all three of these are three different things i don't want to go deep into it you know because i know if i meant with a lot of with a lot of um trauma in terms of sexual abuse there is no way of putting that in a great light you know mm -hmm. with a relationship you can do that with with death you can do that but with with relationship, it's a bad thing. 100% is a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing in any way. But in terms of emotional pain, in any of these, in these three, your brain is taking you back there so you can learn something from that. That's your memory taking you back there. Whoever's made us, made us in this fine way for us to do that. But then what we do is that we don't want to go back there. We don't want to face that day again. You know, we don't want to time travel and face that day again. And because when we get there, we don't feel good. It's like your parents taking you on a holiday and you just don't like it. And a lot of Asians know India, when you're a child, you would hate it. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. But that's how it is. That's how it is. And you don't want to go there. So what you do then is you stop yourself from going to, to from dealing with that emotional pain. So whether that's yeah. drugs, 
any sort of addiction yeah dr garbo mate is a big specialist on this and he has made um many books um around this and a lot of topics he spoke about on youtube about this as well so we're we're talking about we're talking about us having well really the challenge of facing something we don't really want to face mm -hmm. so we will find ways to not have to deal with it through addiction through food through porn yes. through uh, uh, um, uh, numerous partners uh, yes. through leaving one town after another one bed after another one job after another and well, we'll it, consider it a lifestyle yeah. that we're just living but and actually we're running we're yes. running from something that we need to excavate learn as it were pull up a chair and learn something from mm -hmm. Okay, you right. just name you just name you just name all of the population, if not over uh, three fourths of the population on the planet. Oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, everybody has a tendency to run from something that they need to take care of, not, and it's not just the mailbox with a bill. Sometimes it becomes an entire lifestyle to not really handle something that we could have learned some learned something from, which is really preventative maintenance. Is 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 kind of what you've described, and, mm -hmm. but correct me. Am I saying that right? What That's you're saying correct. is like preventative, emotional preventative maintenance. Yes, 100%. What you've just said, everything you have said, you've hit it on the nail. That's bang on. And you are right. A lot of us in this world are doing that. A lot of us. That doesn't, leave, that doesn't leave room for finding somebody that, that you can settle down with and, and be in love and have a, a peaceful life. Yeah. Because if something happens in the relationship, one or both of the parties don't want to address what the real issue is correct yeah that's correct. a problem that's a mm. problem <laughs> i'm just hey, sitting here yeah. thinking about that that's hey, a problem yeah 100 yeah. percent. because the one one or both of the parties are going to say hey it's you hey no it's you hey it's you and there could be unresolved issues that let's say it's me i would have had unresolved issues before i ever met this person that I never took care of. And now I'm still running from that and whatever happens right now. Mm -hmm. yep. That's crazy. That's why in the UK is half of the population in the UK that are married get divorced. Yeah. So <clears throat> before, before a person decides to go into a long-term relationship and, and be committed to that, they need to make sure that they, they took out all the dirty laundry and cleared up before they start, they start, you know, living together with uh getting married to someone mm -hmm. uh, wow man okay i i could keep going on on that i'm not going to do that all right no, so it can happen, go it can yeah. happen after as well so it can happen after you're married yeah because i know um someone who got married and then the mother passed away and then oh. he, kind of, he kind of lost it and found it hard and then he had to go through a divorce you know because you don't so a lot of people they don't want that partner do they who is just depressed like you know mental oh, health is, is a big thing in this world and you know if your partner isn't giving you what you want for your survival you're gonna go get it from somewhere else whatever it is whether it's affection physical relationship money um housing whatever it is however you want your partner what you want from your partner or in this relationship because it's because it is a partnership it is a business partnership if i tell you the truth because there's there's terms you know you can't cheat you can't do this you have to do this we have to do that so there's there's commitments so even if it happens after you you're you're into an issue there that's why mental health is a is a, is a really big thing it's something you really need to understand you know and if you know god forbid your partner tomorrow gets into a sort of mental health situation with depression or anxiety or whatever it is right, right. happening in their life mm -hmm. and then you you and then you turn around and pack your bags and and go and it won't happen just you won't just pack your bags and go you know you probably start going into another relationship first you probably start having arguments first you know things will just start to you know dissolve demolish. fall apart yeah yeah poor poor communication yeah. Uh, and if it was poor communication before, it's going to get worse. Yes. Right. Yes. I'm just yep. saying. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because because yeah. whatever whatever happens in the relationship, let's say let's say it's me and my mm -hmm. and I start having mental health issues, or my partner does, and I decide, okay, I'm out of here. 
there was probably poor communication before that ever happened. Hundred uh, percent. You have you have some you have a comment there from Anastasia. Oh, okay. Uh, who makes a makes a a point there? Can you see it there or no? Yes, I could see. That sounds terribly narcissistic and brutal to leave someone who is going through loss of a parent. Yes, hundred percent. I hate. 100%. I hate to. Say, I hate to say since I've been doing this show for a year, I have heard yeah. that numer numerous times. What yeah. you just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm shocked when I heard it the first time, but yeah. so many therapists and psychologists. Thank you, Anastasia, uh, my beautiful thank friend. You. She actually will be on a show tomorrow uh, okay. on on uh, on Narc Abuse TV. But uh, she makes a valid point. It is a terrible thing. I have heard some of the most amazing things from professionals uh, and individuals like yourself, uh, mental health advocates, of stories just like what you just said. Mm -hmm. I can't, in my mind, I can't fathom that somebody would do that. Mm. That, you know, you're just too depressed. I found somebody else and I'm out of here. Mm. And uh, leave children and all. Just leave them all. Leave, yeah, leave everything. And go. just go start a whole new life as yeah. if they have a, a clean conscience like that person <laughs> and the children never existed. That's horrible. Or like uh -huh. Anastasia said, terrible. What? what I, I gotta, I'm going to pivot over here to something you mentioned self coping skills okay what what can we keep in mind when it comes to self coping skills in life today okay um see with them um, coping skills isn't something that you um make within a day like so say if you're you're very known to go into a psychotic episode at times okay so now you need to know how are you going to cope when you're in that psychotic episode? Because normally when you're in a psychosis, you just can't handle the stress. So you unplug yourself from the world, you know, now rather you go into a different world or not with matter and no matter. I don't know, but you come out of that. And now you don't know what's going on. You can't understand what's going on. And you've gone back to like rebirth. So what's the best thing you can do then? Now, every coping mechanism for everyone is different. Like when I used to work at the drug service, we used to do a risk assessment. So in that risk assessment, we'd ask them, what are your risks? We'd find out what kind of a person are you in terms of your risks. And then when they give us these risks or when we have mm -hmm. flushed them through third parties, through other ser drug services, mental health services, prison services, and we know the risk of the client, we ask the client, what would you need for us or for yourself or from any service? when you go into this risk, when you go into a psychotic episode or when you go into depression or when you when you go into any, any sort of withdrawal or whatever it is, whatever the risky behavior this person has got. So I would say that the, your coping mechanism or your coping skills is, is up to you. Now, a lot of people feel that a coping skill or a coping mechanism is using the gym or reading a book or going for a run or talking to friends and family and stuff like that. Now, from all of that, I would say talking connection is not a coping skill, but is something that you'd be able to then um, secure yourself, make yourself feel better in terms of what is happening to you psychologically. When you go to use the gym, when you go to read a book, when you go to watch a film, you're, you're doing nothing but you're running from the issue or the situation like we've just spoke about. Mm -hmm. So now all that is good for you not to go into a psychotic episode. So if you're already in a psychotic episode, it's a different thing to do. You need connection then, you need a helping hand, you need services, you need the um, doctors, medication, whatever it is. But then when you're not in a psychotic, psychotic episode, you just need to think this is just a psychotic episode um example i'm giving there's many of these but you just need to think that how can i not get stressed how can i change my survival instinct so i don't get stressed so i don't go into a psychotic episode mm -hmm. so for that if you are training every day if you are reading books if you're watching movies if you're doing these things then you want, you're less likely to get stressed and when you're less likely to get stressed you're less likely to go into a psychotic episode so there's coping things that you need to build around you in, in your life over time so you don't go into a, a bad state. 
and then there's something that you do when you're in a bad state and when you're in a bad state then you don't run then you face you stand there and you face because the more you don't stand there and you don't face the more larger it gets the more larger the problem gets and then you get more problems after that then you'll be at the doctors getting medication i'm not against medication whatsoever but what i'm saying is you know there is a way where you might not need medication or you might not need it for life or whatever it is you know and a lot of people do get a bit touchy about this subject on, in terms of medication and i'm not against medication in any sort of way but there is other ways that you can handle um, your, your stuff so for example like we spoke about emotional pain and your memories now if somebody that's going through emotional pain this is why they're taking medication for depression anxiety yeah whatever it is. that yeah. can happen yes yeah that can yeah happen. Mm -hmm. so if i say to them oh okay it's your memories now if i say to you it's your memories let's delete all your memories and then you won't go through any emotional pain would you want that now of course they wouldn't want that because then they've got good memories as well so they're okay to have good memories, but they don't want the bad memories where they can grow and they can learn themselves, learn something from, from things that has happened to them in the past. Mm. Now, if you look at any animal, any plant, any human being, we grow and that's life because we grow. Yeah. So if you don't grow, what are you? You're dead, right? You're dead. You're dead. So I got, a, I got an answer. You got, right. you got the answer. <laughs> You got the answer. So if you're dead, I was hoping I was hoping you wouldn't ask me anything. I seriously was. I told you. I told you. I told you from the beginning. I don't know nothing. And you <laughs> asked me a question. I'm sitting there going like, "Oh, dude, what's the right answer? Dead? <laughs> the dead? Yes, perfect. Ding, I got it right. Okay, yeah. so go ahead. So wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so check this out. Uh, when it comes to a relationship, then, okay. Mental health in a relationship. Our mental health, keeping our mental health where it needs to be, feeding it, taking care of it, nurturing it while we're in a relationship. And the relationship turns abusive. The relationship is emotionally uh, uh, challenging, difficult. Well, we have those, whether it's uh, romantic or not, work-related or not, whatever the relationship may be. You're saying then that in order to continue the growth, we need to do some emotional weed pulling and just face some things sometimes. We need to face it instead of running from it and stand there and pull out the bad stuff and learn from it and then move on. And no, yeah. no matter what the other person does, we're going to learn something from that situation. No, 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 no. Because if you're talking about physical abuse, then oh anastasia says something here. i think first we need to eliminate the stressor yeah, hey, yeah, we, yeah. Should, so we should it, we should turn we should tell her to turn her mic on and she can just talk yeah to yeah, yeah she can do yeah hey yeah. anastasia you know hi. What? yeah there we go that's much that's much easier okay so hey you can hear me hi i need to leave the building first okay go ahead thank you so much Hey, thank you, thank, thank you for inviting thank, me to participate. No, hey, you know what? This is I'm happy. Plus, I'm I'm always happy to hear your voice. Uh, you're you're a good friend. But go ahead. You were gonna say something to Raju. Raju is is the man of the hour. Go ahead. You still there, Anastasia? Anastasia, go ahead if you wanted to say something, my dear. Must be internet. <clears throat> okay. Must be internet. Yeah. We lost you. Yeah, therefore. I think I lost, oh, there she I is. lost you. Yeah. Okay. Back. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Uh oh. We lost Chris, again. Chris, are you are you asking me? I didn't hear anything. I was. Yes. Go ahead. Was, Go ahead. No can message. you can you hear us right now? Can you yeah. hear me? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We want we want to hear uh, you instead of the typing. So go right ahead, my friend. Ah, okay, okay. So my uh, my point was uh, that you need to eliminate the stressor first before you start your healing journey, because otherwise it would be always kind of interrupting that 
stress her if you still have it, right? Yeah, 100%. Um, obviously, if there's an abusive relationship, I think that's um, something that you're, you're talking about. Um, then yes, we would have to, we can't be in a relationship like that, you know. And I've done all the safeguarding training at work, um, whether it's adults or a child. And I would suggest anybody in a relationship, no matter what abuse it is, physical, financial, um, you know, any neglect, any psychological, whatever abuse it is, you do not need to stick around. I wouldn't personally and you know you don't need to either and nobody should um, stick around and you know be in that sort of um, relationship um, <clears throat> so yeah I would eliminate the stressor um, straight away um, but sometimes say there is stresses that we can't maybe say on a physical level um, we've yeah, got any sort of physical true. problems then stresses we can't chronic pain we can't um, mm -hmm. and then other things that we are putting into ourselves so say smoking that's a big stressor um, drugs alcohol that's a really big stressor so there's something the, that, sorry on those on those uh, coping mechanisms smoking well, drinking they're just your way of dealing with the yes yeah yeah problem. yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, they, I would say, could they also I'm sorry could they also be considered to be coping um inhibitors as well could they be considered to be an inhibitor or 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 could they also be a way of blocking an individual to be in a position to cope because they would create more problems yeah 100 percent. because okay, i think it's a yeah sorry no no go ahead anastasia please it's a very fine tuned balance it's very yeah it's not the straightforward answer I think some of those coping like coping mechanisms which are uh, harmful in the long run, they can can be used. I think it's it's yeah. I don't know who decides <laughs> how to balance. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I I I uh, I do know that the stressor definitely can create a pattern in which uh, a person uh, can do a lot of self-work uh, raju you're the expert on this a person can do some self-work but if that stressor is still there kind of what you uh, both have alluded to the stressor is going to keep coming back um that's going to be a problem mm -hmm. unless it's something that cannot be removed and must be endured cancer and a number of other things you mentioned how does a person when it comes to mental health deal with whether it be an abusive situation or other factors that come into play, how do they cope? I'm, I, I, you know, both of you, either one that wants mm -hmm. to answer, but, but Raju, how does a person function and cope when they listen back to what we're talking about right now? What tips, strategies that they can keep in mind to cope and hold on to their mental health mm -hmm. a day at a time? Hmm. Um, you gonna go first, Anastasia, or do you want me to? Oh, uh, check him out. Trying to be a gentleman. He gonna let you go. <laughs> wait, 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 way to toss it. Way to toss it to her. She, hey, she can't. Oh, that's messed up, man. <laughs> no, I, I can only speak from my personal experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, as Paxton mentioned, day at a time. That's very good strategy. <laughs> Even like <laughs> moment at a time. Yeah. hour at a time it depends on where at what stage you are of the abuse or whatever struggle you are in um what was the question <laughs> no when, when it comes to when it comes to coping mm -hmm. uh, day at a time oh, it depends, okay. depends you mentioned yeah. it depends on where you are but go ahead please yeah so i think uh even that raju isn't really like the idea of um, exercise, I think it's very helpful. The physical exercise, mm -hmm. um, any sort of art, uh, I don't know, dance thing mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. write. Write actually as a automotive uh, handwriting, also a very good technique. Uh, just to not not to speak to a friend, kind of right. vent to a friend, but speak to your paper pen and paper and just put it on paper because like 
a lot of the time you after you speak to a friend and like dumped all your problems you feel even more like you feel guilty like or uh-huh. maybe in a moment you can't can stop yourself from <laughs> went went in too much but then you kind of feel guilty that oh maybe it was too much or maybe maybe the yeah. response wasn't the way like what you expected to get the, the feedback was different so you pro- like usually you feel even more heavier <laughs> than before <laughs> start yeah. feeling you start feeling guilty because you vented so 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 long so hard and <laughs> so often so to, to often your, yeah to your poor friends um uh psych- psychology help um uh, mental any kind of therapist is good too in terms of venting specialist you can vent to your psychologist without any guilt and luckily get some positive feedbacks not necessarily but <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes yeah um i found extremely helpful one person on youtube richard granan um i found him unfortunately a little bit later on my journey but um so he developed his uh, kind of techniques on how to overcome um, complex post-traumatic stress disorders. Uh-huh. So yeah, so he's he teaching techniques how to uh, stop those flashbacks, emotional flashbacks, and so basically memories, as Raju said, right? So Emot- emotional flashbacks. Um... Have, have they been a challenge for you, my friend? Oh, yeah. Me? Me, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they were. I, I think and... uh, I, I, look, I look forward to, um, to uh, you know what? That, that's okay, gonna yeah. Be, that's going to be will what step, we're... I will wait, step that, out. Wait, yeah. no, 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 no. You, hey, you, hey don't... Over. Wait, no, you're not taking over. Look at Raju. He's tired of talking. He tired of talking. Yeah, to me. Talk He's tired of talking. His wife is listening, going like he don't even talk to me that long. But hey, so I was gonna say, what I was gonna, now I'm starting trouble. No, what I was gonna say is, hey, that that should be the name of our show tomorrow. Since you're doing a show tomorrow, uh, okay. we should talk. We should talk about uh, talk about uh, what what uh, emotional flashback. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, but but okay. Ra- Raju. <laughs> You don't need to step. You don't need to step anywhere. You stay right where you are. You, you're doing just fine. Look at Raju. He's ready to take a nap. He's going like packs of maybe. It's nighttime over there for him in the UK. But what I was going to say is, um, we're see we're both in California, Raju. And so so are you um, okay? We're 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 still in the morning here. You look like you're getting ready to go. go oh, we'll be soon. Yeah, we're we'll watching. You go, you go, you go watch a movie. <laughs> movie on. Now. So, so do us a huge favor. Uh, we have gone uh, almost an hour now, uh, close to it. Uh, do me a huge favor. Tell me this. Anastasia's been talking about a, a number of different things that we've been given some thought to. You've highlighted a number of different things. Uh, I'm not going to do a summary or a review because this is just the beginning of, I hope, uh, some other things uh, we have in mind to do with you, Raju, uh, in the future for our website. Uh, shows like this that people can only find on our website or the or you'll be able to post it. They won't find it on Instagram. It's going to either be on our website or you're going to be able to have a copy, of course. Uh, but I've only picked your brain a little bit. I have an entire sheet and some still left over here of stuff to ask you. So, so, so don't even think you done got off scot free. So, so, so we haven't even talked about compliments and criticism and people feeling that they're not good enough. Uh, addiction. I've got tons of stuff to ask you about addiction. Uh, we look forward to doing some more with you, but I do want to touch on this. You talk about criminal behavior. Mm-hmm. I can't find too many people that have been on my show, mm-hmm. let alone others that talk about criminal behavior. What is up with that as being a part of your specialty criminal behavior before we have to go? Well, for me, I think all of this is all interlinked. Mental health, criminal behavior, addiction. The help that you can help in a, someone with an addiction problem or a mental health problem is the same help that a criminal behavior would need. Because it's oh, all... Time out. Sorry. Wait, that was really good. No, wait. Would you just say they're all the same help? That was really... Really? 
the, the help that you need, it's all psychological. Oh, uh, okay. It's all psychological. That's all it is. And the main thing, what it is about the psychological stuff is, is the want to feel better. So if you're going through a mental health episode or a long run of depression, what do you want? You want to feel better. You want to feel happier. You want to, you want a better life. Addiction, same thing. What is it? You want to feel better. You take drugs to feel better, to suppress the emotional pain. Why? To feel better. Same with criminal behavior. No matter what it is, if it's a lash out, you've hurt someone. If it's because of your addiction, beha addic addictive behaviors, you need money. If it's because of your mental health state, you're not feeling well, you're doing stupid things, whatever it is, all of it is linked with your psychological mess within your brain. So if, say, you know, you've been in an abusive relationship and you're now you've been sentenced and that's your criminal behavior because you've been, you know, hurting your partner for whatever reason it was and however it was. Now, in terms of this psychological mess, what one gets will always give it to another. And what one does will affect everyone and what everyone does will affect the one. So whatever you have been through in your life, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying this is what you should do, but this is what people do because they have been hurt for any sort of reason. They feel that they have the right now or that because now I've got it, I should give it back. Now, I really don't know how it works in terms of that because I haven't really lived that sort of life. But I do know in terms of criminal behavior, I justified in my head that because of my dad passed away, watch what I do to this world now. But really, I was messing my own world. Nobody else's. Wow. You know what I mean? I was messing nobody else's world. I was messing my own world up because of my emotional pain towards God or, you know, f having this fight with God that he, you took my dad away. So now watch what I do. You know, and maybe that you can probably find a movie scene in that. Maybe, you know what I mean, where we learn it from. No, where no, we... There are people that know there are people that that live their life like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I've had it rough, then I'm justified to going to that neighborhood and breaking into that home. That's and it. everything escalates from one to the other to mm -hmm. it's justifiable murder, murder in their mind to take something from someone else in and in their life. So mm -hmm. the want to is the key. Yes. No. So if you if you drop the want to, if you drop the want to feel better, you're, you've succeeded in your life. It's game over for you. That's it. You don't need to do nothing else. You'll get the best sleep ever. When you go to sleep, you'll get the best sleep ever because there is no more want. There is no more what I'm going to do tomorrow, what I'm going to do next year. I've got all these plans. I'm not saying don't be ambitious. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like be ambitious. Get everything you want. But when you always want and you can't get maybe and when you're not grateful for what you already have and when you don't see that maybe if I do get this, maybe life wouldn't have been better. I know a lot of times in my life I've wanted things, I've got there and I'm like, you know what, I was better off where I was. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I and, and then I should have I should have stayed where I was. Yeah, I and then you go back. Yeah. But it's just that want, that the want to feel better, the want to have better things, the want this and I want that. And when life is not going through the way you want it to go, like Sadhguru says, then you're going to go into your own psychological mess and your psychological drama. Because you want things to be perfect, you want your life to be perfect, you want this and that. And it's okay, when they say it's okay not to be okay, that doesn't mean, oh, it's okay to be depressed, get depressed. No, that's what people assume that, oh, it's okay to get depressed, get depressed, be depressed for your whole life. It's okay not to be okay. No, that's not what it means. What it means is it's okay not to be okay, meaning it's okay not to have everything. It's okay not to feel good today. You know what I mean? It's fine. But then if you're thinking, oh, it's not okay not to be okay, let me be depressed for the rest of my life, then that's not okay. That's not okay. That's incorrect. That's but the people wrong believe way. That. Yeah, yeah, but people assume that. They're like, you know what, it's fine, it's fine. Like, like I'm no one to judge. It's your life. If you want to be depressed today or tomorrow, I did it for 10 years. You know what I mean? So I, I'm no one to judge. But if you want to be, then that's fine. If you don't want to be, then find out how. But what normally what people do is 
they need the help but then when you get the advice of someone or you hear things from specialists or people that have been through it they assume that they're wrong or they try and challenge them and they say no that's wrong but then you're the one who's asking for help you're the one that needs the help you're the one that is not successful in terms of whatever you need addiction mental health criminal right, behavior, right. whatever it is so right. but when someone is telling you you're, you're then challenging that it's a different when you don't understand something but when they you but, but but when you need the help and then you try and teach them that no this is how you handle your relationship but your relationship is totally you know in a mad one you know what i mean yeah or this is how you handle your mental health but your mental health is screwed totally yeah. you know but this is where people go wrong so like you know i think a lot of people what we do is we we learn a lot from books from tv from youtube this that but then if you haven't experienced it like anastasia has you know what i mean if you haven't experienced emotional pain you will never know how to come out of it you can read all the books in the world you can listen to all youtube videos in the world you know what i mean but if you haven't experienced it you're not going to be able to get out of it what people do they haven't experienced it and then they and they haven't got out of it and they would be like oh no this is how you do it but no how, how, how can you you can't just assume that you know how to swim or read all the books in the swim and not jump in the water right right you know what i mean that doesn't mean you know how to swim you know what i mean or what mostly what people do is they assume that they know it all and then they jump in the water they get to the deep end and then they want to learn now what's, what's the point trying to learn now yeah. you can't learn now you've got to learn before. you're in the deep you're in the deep end now yeah. you're about you're to die <laughs> you're gonna die so i think these are the barriers we face um people face with with, with addiction mental health, criminal behavior we just assume that we know what we're doing or you know we've heard this we've done that but now nah, you know you need to really experience it you need to dive into the deep end sometimes you know what i mean and you need to experience it all get down there, get dirty, it's fine. And then come out of it. And you know you will. You'll get upset. You'll cry your heart out. Tomorrow you'll be fine. Next year you'll be fine. Don't run away from the depression yeah. or what needs to be looked at because mm. it will it will just grow and build and it'll mm. become worse. Mm. Literally, as you're saying, get down and dirty with, with whatever is troubling yeah. you was troubling us mm. and don't try to run from it or sweep it under the rug mm. deal with it yeah. work through it yeah and don't just well don't don't try to find ways to escape yeah um, it's okay to eat some ice cream but don't make that the <laughs> no i'm day. just saying no i'm just yeah no no two, <laughs> two, two no two or three in a day i'll find entire, out what you now. i'll find out what you do now cake. no an entire chocolate cake man that's i'll go like no nah, this cake's for me <laughs> you're like when i eat this emotionally i'm gonna feel better until i until i get on a scale the next day and then i, I start hating myself all over there you uh, go uh, no, you so, 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 hmm? so i have to have the one right i have, have to want to I have the wrong ones. <laughs> yeah, the wrong one. Yeah. The wrong one. So I have to have the proper one. Hey, look, my friend, thank you for doing this with me. You are the second person that uh, I've done this with. Uh, you will not be the last, but uh, hopefully this will not be your last, and you will allow me to have you on again to pick mm -hmm. your brain. Because, uh, again, like I mentioned, this is something uh, for our website that will be coming out soon. Where we will have a number of, as it were, free live shows that people can come to but they will be shows on demand on our website for people to see of people we want to learn from like yourself and uh anastasia thank you so much my friend my beautiful friend for being here you're you're a good person and uh for being here uh by the way raju whatever you do make sure you follow her page because she's gonna be when she's famous she may she may remember you and i but when she's famous you know, her, her agency, they may they may let her talk to us again. I'm not sure. Her people, you know, the conglomerate to become. Uh, but then maybe you can remember Raju and his family and me uh, when you become famous in the state. I'll see you you're tomorrow, too, though. Yeah, you're too nice. Can I say just one word to Raju? Please say, please say more than one. Well, go ahead. Yeah, Raju, I, I'm really, I just want to tell you that I'm really sorry that what happened to you when you were 14 years old and I'm glad that you're doing good now and you overcome that tragedy in your life it's, it's very hard it's, I mean I can't imagine I, yeah, I'm
I'm really sorry. That's I wish okay. you all the best. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, I was going to say, um, I truly appreciate uh, Anastasia because she's such a good hearted person. And uh, you just proved that before I even said it. So thank you very much for saying that. Uh, it, uh, I, I, uh, I must say to you too, Raji, thank you for taking out of your time. Uh, I want to I wanna make sure to say this to you while your wife uh, is probably asleep. She's probably, yeah, she's probably, probably asleep watching TV. Yeah. So she's giving you support. But she is an amazing <laughs> woman uh, because she has uh, kept, you, uh, kept you around and decided that you were a really good guy to take the trash out. So I'm, I'm glad she kept you. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I feel your pain, my friend, when you talk about your dad. Uh, I was 16 when my father, my father died. He was my best friend. Uh, so, so I understand what you're saying. Those moments of uh, depression that can happen uh, from that. But uh, we are here today uh, because we survived. It. Your wife is talking to you. Oh, thank you, guys. He's a, he, he's a good guy. Make, they, yeah, yeah. Thank us. Don't thank him until he takes the trash out. Make sure he gives you a foot rub and a back rub. Put some oh, candles up. Don't say Go that. grocery shopping. Give him a long grocery list. Give him a long grocery list. Make him find stuff in the store that's hard to find. <laughs> oh, All right. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm, done. I'm done here torturing you. Uh, I will talk to you again, my friend. And uh, you will, of course, get a copy of this. Uh, yes. We're going to... Thank you, my friend. Don't, don't think you're getting away, man. I got a whole bunch of stuff to talk to you about. Oh, yeah, man. I'll yeah. talk to you soon. Go watch your movie. Thank yeah. you, Anastasia. We'll see you guys later. All right. Yeah. Take care. Bye.